Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson. Now Bootstrap and other CSS frameworks perfected the 12 column grid system for us and allowed us to create very consistent layouts on the web with just a little math. And although fortunately we are no longer dependent on the system to be able to create layouts on the web, it is still a very useful way to create layouts. Luckily, we're no longer required to use 12 or 24 columns. We can have five or 13 or any other amount of columns we may need. In this lesson, we're gonna be building out the form part of the previous widget. Now, unlike the stack and the split, we need to create consistent getters in both the inline and the block directions. In addition to this, we need to lay out our input fields across multiple column tracks. Okay, so let's start with some basic markup. And as always, you can follow along with the code, back, the code sandbox starter that I have linked in the notes below. So we're gonna to wanna to import React from React. And in this case, we have this component called form group. And that's in a file over here called form group. You don't really kind of be on the, what we're trying to focus on in this course, but it's important to know it's just basically a div with a label and, an, and it allows you to put any input you want inside of it. So with the power of copy and paste, let's go ahead and pull that in here. And this is exactly where we left off in the last lesson. So in the last lesson, we Uh, take two. Okay, guys, so let's start off with some basic markup. Once again, we're using the uh, starter with the link in the notes below if you want to follow along. And this is pretty much where we left off. We had this form component that was being used by the app. Now we're gonna actually go ahead and build this component out. And we're gonna import React from React. We're gonna import a component called form group. That's this version where we've actually pulled this form group component out into its own file. It's really not important how it's implemented, but you can go look at it if you would like. And that's in the form group file. And let's go ahead and copy and paste for my notes here. And this is where we left off in the last lesson. Now, so far we talked, we started with the stack component that we just did display grid and we set some gaps. Then we added some columns with the split. So let's kind of get that. Let's get it to where we were with the split a little bit. So we're going to go import styled from styled components. And we're going to create a component called columns equals styled dot div. And before we add it, let's just go ahead and preemptively put that around our component. So yeah, when we built the split, we did display grid and we did a gap. In this case, we did props, props dot, oh, oh, we need our spacing map. We did props dot gutter otherwise it would default to spacing map dot lg and we need to bring that in so let's import that in
That's good. And then with the split, we say grid template columns. And we just did 1FR, 1FR to do like a ratio of 50 50 split. Oh, let's go ahead and put that semicolon. Everybody misses a semicolon sometimes. And yeah, that creates a two column split. Now, if, as we learned when we were making the split, if we want to make three, four, 18 columns, that would get pretty ridiculous if we had to go 1FR, 1FR over and over and over again. So luckily, uh, there is a function that we can use called repeat. And it helps to spell it right. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. And in here we can say, I want six columns of 1FR. And this will give us six equal columns. Now we can Whatever we put in here, let, let's say we only wanted three columns. This would give us three equal columns. But what it does is it repeats three times whatever we put in here. We can pass multiple values. So if we wanted to alternate every other column to be 100 pixels to 200 pixels, and we want to do that three times, this is what we do. And you can see we have six columns in all but three times it repeats this 100 200 100 200 100 200 pattern so that's pretty cool but in this case the layout we're looking for has six columns now the other thing we need to do is we need to span multiple columns and that's where we're going to create a complementary primitive called the column component and this column component see there's a property in grid that we can put on the children itself that let's us say hey I know I want to change my default instead of me being spanning three columns I want to span sorry instead of me spanning one column I want to span three columns and once again this is doing it like this is going to break the the properties of encapsulated CSS that's okay we're going to expose this via props which doesn't break encapsulation so we, we have this columns it's taking up six that creates six column tracks and then we want to let's just set it for three columns like this for now and once again let's copy and paste i'm just going to redo this and what we've done here is we've wrapped each of these form groups in a column and what this because we set it to three this is going to create kind of that split effect again because we have created six individual columns, but we're telling each form group to span three columns. Now, obviously, this doesn't um, work well if we if we're going to hard code these values. So let's go ahead and let's create a, a prop. Let's use a prop called columns, where we can set the number of columns. And in fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take that value columns. We're going to destructure it off of props. Oops. And we're going to give it a default value of one. And then we can just return that because we know that this will have the right amount of columns. So what this says is, hey, grab the columns prop. Give it a default value of one if nothing's provided and then just return it and that's the value that will be used in repeat and then we can come in here and go columns equals six and now we we've fixed that issue the other one we want to do is that same thing for the span function so i want to do pretty much do this now, instead of the columns prompt, we probably want, 
we would maybe want to do something like span, right? And not span, span. And th that would make a lot of sense. The only problem is span is an HTML attribute. And if we if we're not using it, this gets basically the span will get sent all the way down to that div and it can cause layout problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a dollar sign. Oops. And this dollar sign is a convention used in style components, but it's also just a good convention period. And it says, hey, this is a property that I want to use for when creating my CSS, but I don't want it to flow all the way down to the HTML element itself. So once again, let's recreate this entire thing. Let's add all those spans in. Now these ones we did want to split, so we're going to set those explicitly as three columns. The email group, though, we wanted to we wanted it to go a little bit longer, so that's four columns. The street address we want to take up an entire row, so that's six columns, and then two columns for the final three input groups. And this is the layout we want to achieve. And we could stop here, but there is one problem. You probably didn't even recognize it. But what happens if we define, if we're trying to span more columns than we actually have set in our in our columns track? We start getting some weird layout. Like you start seeing things that start looking off and it doesn't look right. Because that's, the reason is, is because we're trying to tell this form group to span three columns, but there's only two column tracks. So what we need is a way to span three columns if we can, but don't span more than the amount of columns that are up here. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do just a little refactoring here. We're going to take this out. And we're going to put this in a CSS custom property called columns. Now, if you never use CSS custom properties, sometimes called CSS variables, um, it's basically a property like display, gap, grid that you can set. You can give it a value and then pull that value out whenever you need it. Um, the only like limitation is all your properties have to start with that double dash. And then if you want to pull the value out, you just use the var function and pass in the name of the column. Uh, oh, sorry, the name of the custom property you want. So now we've refactored to pull this repeat value, gets it from columns, and the columns is set using our string interpolation function that we pass into style components. Oops. Now... The reason why we do this is because now that we set it as a custom property, this property is available to this or any of the children technically. So now we're going to then take advantage of a, pro a function in CSS called min, where it does, oops, not min block size, just min. And min will give you back whichever value ends up being le less what's really cool is you can do something like 50 percent and 500 pixels and this will return back whichever is smaller so if 50 percent happens to be 502 pixels it will still give you 500 pixels but if it gives if it is less then it will give you 50 percent allows you to do some cool logic on variable widths or or things that that may change on you. So what we're going to do is instead of just straight up using this span, we're going to wrap in a min, which is cool. So now we have the span in the first value that we're going to get. But then the second value, we're going to use the var keyword and pass in columns. And this will give us this value up here. 
So if we pass in a span of three right here, but the columns is set to two, then the amount of columns that it spans will only be two because two is less than the amount we passed in. As you can see here, that's what's going on here. Everything that we passed in was either two or two or more. So everything is taking up the entire row. Now, if we were to go to four columns, for example, oops, I have to save that and refresh. Sometimes the hot reloading gets stuck. Here we go. You can see the, uh, we've set this to four columns. This is spanning three, so there's an extra column left. But the email was already set to four, so it takes up the entire amount. The street address was set to six, but because column, it's not going to max out more than four, it just takes up the entire width, just like email. So that's that's just a good, safe way to that this column prop will not do unexpected things if we use it wrong. And there we go. We could end it right there. It'd be totally perfectly fine. Now, the and in fact, the there's a link to this code sandbox. Well with the final code at the end of this lesson. Now there's also a link to another code sandbox that I have out there, and it addresses the issue of responsive design. Because the question is, what do we do when we get to like really small screens? What do we do to adjust? And there's some different strategies you can follow. There is one strategy that I've built directly into the layout primitives at Bedrock Layout that allows it to switch when the actual width, not the viewport, the width of the element, the, the parent container, changes to be below the threshold that I give it, and it'll switch to a stack layout at that point. It's really kind of cool. It's implemented using Resizer, Resize Observer. And if you want to see how it's implemented, you can go over to code sorry, to GitHub and look under packages and there is the split and well as the columns components. And you can see how those are implemented. So that we've learned how to make the columns primitive today, which is excellent for setting the number of column tracks. And we also learned about setting the column primitive. Now, sometimes we have a layout where we don't know in advance how many columns we want. We just want to use as many columns as possible without going below a minimum um, width for each of our items. And to do that, that's when the grid primitive really shines. And we're going to learn how to build the grid primitive in the next lesson.